Hey, 42 here. There are certain things in life that are universally known. There are eight planets in the solar system. The blue whale is the biggest animal that ever lived. Diamond is the hardest naturally occurring substance on Earth. And Mount Everest is the tallest mountain. But my dear viewer, that fact is a total lie. And if you think this video is just going to be about a certain Hawaiian volcano, you're only half right. What if I was to tell you that there are in fact two mountains other than Everest that can quite confidently claim to be the tallest on Earth? You see, despite the fact that every textbook, website, encyclopedia, and natural history documentary you've ever seen has confidently told you that Mount Everest is the tallest peak on the planet, I've got some peculiar news for you. It isn't. Well, it probably isn't, but let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Surfshark VPN keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. And Surfshark VPN lets you travel the world virtually by changing your virtual location. Or if you are physically traveling, Surfshark lets you connect via your home country so you don't miss out on any of your home comforts, such as streaming video content from home that might be blocked whilst traveling. There are over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, so Anywhere you go, you'll find a server that fits your needs. Surfshark VPN offers a multi-hop feature, so you can put two VPN servers between you and your online destination for even more privacy and security. And I love Surfshark's IP rotator feature, which constantly changes your device's IP address without losing your VPN connection. It's really important to stay safe online when out and about, and that's why I use Surfshark VPN, so I can, for example, access my online banking safely, even on public Wi-Fi. There's no chance I'd ever do that without a VPN. Quite simply, Surfshark VPN is an essential tool, and by using the code 42, you'll benefit from an 83% discount plus three extra months for free. All you have to do is click the special link in the description below, so don't miss out. And thanks to Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. In 1802, the East India Company launched one of the biggest cartographical projects in history. Known as the Great Trigonometrical Survey, it aims to precisely map all four and a half million square kilometers of the Indian subcontinent. Over the course of almost 70 years, the Great Trigonometrical Survey quite literally put India on the map, and one of its crowning achievements was to determine the exact heights of many of the tallest mountains on Earth. This was only 200 or so years ago, just a few generations back, but in those days, many of these most massive of mountains were completely unknown to Western science. It wasn't just that we weren't sure how tall they were, we didn't even know they existed. That made the Great Trigonometrical Survey a true journey of discovery. And as its cartographers, explorers, and surveyors penetrated ever deeper into the remotest reaches of the Himalayas, they met ever more monstrous mountains. As a result, the mountain considered to be the tallest on Earth changed on a fairly regular basis throughout the 19th century as new peaks were discovered and accurately measured for the first time. In the 300 years or so preceding the survey, it had been widely accepted that Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador was the tallest mountain in the world when measured against sea level. That changed in 1808, when the survey discovered a Nepalese mountain called Dolagiri, which wasn't just bigger than Chimborazo, it was much bigger, almost two whole kilometers. Dolagiri was considered the tallest mountain on Earth until 1847, when Kachinjunga was found to be a couple of hundred meters taller, and Kachinjunga passed the baton onto K2 when it was discovered in 1856. K2 only held the record for a matter of months, because later that year, Mount Everest, named after George Everest, one time head of the Great Trigonometrical Survey and Surveyor General of India, was officially declared the tallest mountain in the world. It's held that title ever since. But despite more than 160 years as the world's premier peak, Mount Everest's hold on that lofty record is surprisingly shaky. The question is, if Everest isn't the true king of mountains, what is? Confusingly, there isn't actually a simple answer to that question. It all comes down to how you measure it. 
And sure enough, if you were to hold up the world's longest tape measure against every mountain on Earth, you would indeed find that Mount Everest is the tallest. But my friend, you just made the classic mountain measuring mistake of standing on dry land. Because the honour of highest hill actually belongs to Mauna Kea, a dormant volcano that towers over Hawaii, the largest of the Hawaiian islands. And Mauna Kea doesn't just pip Everest by a hair, standing at a staggering 10,210 metres, it's well over a kilometre taller. If you were to drop Britain's tallest mountain, Ben Nevis, directly on top of Everest's snowy peak, Mauna Kea would still be bigger. There is, however, a bit of a catch. More than half of the mighty mountain Mauna Kea is submerged beneath the Pacific Ocean, leaving a little over 4,200 metres above sea level. That's why Everest is officially considered the taller mountain. And you might think that sounds perfectly reasonable, but is it really? Standing at 8 feet 3 inches, Turkish farmer Sultan Kozun is the tallest man alive today. If he was to, say, stand in a swimming pool for a bit, would that change his height? Would the good people at Guinness give his record to somebody else? Obviously not. So why doesn't the same logic apply to mountains? You could argue that a Turkish farmer going for a dip isn't quite the same as Mauna Kea standing submerged in the Pacific Ocean ever since it formed about a million years ago, and that's a fair point. But not even oceans are permanent. Admittedly, climbing Mauna Kea is going to be a very different experience to scaling Everest. You're going to need access to a submarine for one thing. And in contrast to the rarefied air of Everest's upper slopes, the peak of Mauna Kea isn't even always covered in snow. Perhaps that's the real reason Mount Everest is so widely accepted as Big Daddy. Mauna is clearly taller, but Everest pierces higher into the atmosphere. When you reach its peak, you are, quite literally, standing on top of the world. The closest you can get to the stars with your feet on solid ground. Except that isn't actually true either. We've already established that Everest isn't the tallest mountain on Earth if you measure from base to tip, and you should always measure base to tip. But what if I was to tell you that you can climb even higher? Unless you're Kyrie Irving, you probably picture planet Earth as a giant sphere. That's how it's always depicted, and that's how it appears when we see images of it from space. But that isn't entirely accurate. In reality, our home world is an oblate spheroid. To put that into normal person English, Earth isn't spherical, nor is it flat. It's fat. Thanks to the combined effects of gravity and Earth's spin, like your waistline after Christmas dinner, our planet bulges around the middle. On a planetary scale, that bulge is absolutely tiny. If you were to shrink Earth down to the size of a beach ball, it would be about a millimetre wider when measured around the equator rather than through the poles. That's why you can't detect the bulge when you see images of Earth from space. But on something the size of a planet, even a minuscule deformation such as this has a significant impact on a human scale. Someone standing at the North Pole is about 20 kilometers closer to Earth's core than someone standing on the equator. And the same, of course, is true for mountains. Thanks to a boost from Earth's unsightly paunch, the highest point on Earth when measured from the center of the planet isn't on top of Mount Everest. It isn't even in the Himalayas. It's 10,000 miles away in Ecuador. I mentioned at the start of this video that, for several hundred years, Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador was thought to be the tallest mountain in the world when measured against sea level. Mountaineers today flock to Mount Everest, but in the 17th and 18th century, it was Chimborazo that brought in crowds of climbers, hoping to stand on top of the world. In reality, back then, Western science had gotten this one quite spectacularly wrong. With an elevation of just 6,263 meters, Chimborazo doesn't even make the top 200 tallest mountains on Earth. It's only the 39th tallest in the Andes. But in a genuinely incredible coincidence, thanks to its location just one degree south of the equator, Chimborazo is the highest point on the planet. Its peak is a healthy 3,967 miles from Earth's center. 
a full 1.3 miles higher than the peak of Mount Everest, despite being more than 2.5 kilometers shorter when measured against sea level. So, in the end, all those 17th and 18th century mountaineers who made it to the peak of Chimborazo really were standing on top of the world, just not in the way they fought. So then, Everest, Mauna Kea, or Chimborazo? Ultimately, it's up to you. But there's a very real argument here that of these three mountains, Everest actually has the least claim to the title of tallest on Earth. Mauna Kea is objectively the biggest, and Chimborazo is undisputedly the highest. By comparison, Everest's record as the highest peak above sea level starts to sound kind of niche, even a little arbitrary. Don't get me wrong, Everest remains a majestic and inspiring place. It pierces further into the atmosphere than any other mountain, making its peak one of the most extreme places ever visited by man. It has an incredible history, and its status as a mountain of legendary proportions is so very well deserved. But that doesn't change the fact that there are many ways of measuring the most monstrous mountain on Earth, and Everest only wins in one of them. Thanks for watching.